What's up guys, this is Max from HardwareHobbyist.com and this video is going to be the first in a series that Bill and I will do which will cover um, the process of putting together a custom PC from start to finish. But before I show you all the parts that we have laid out here, I want to talk a little bit about selecting and buying the actual parts. So before you uh, get a list of parts that you want, make sure you've done tons of research. I know it's, it's pretty boring and you just want to go buy stuff, but it's really the most imperative part of building a PC because it's such a big investment and you don't want to have um, problems down the road with parts that are known to be defective, things like that. So just make sure you know what you're getting. Also keep in mind what your computer is actually going to be used for. Like if you're going to buy a computer that's um, mainly for office work or uh, homework, things like that, rather than playing games on, you're probably going to want to spend a lot less money on a graphics processor maybe get an integrated one into the motherboard and uh, completely eliminate that cost and then spend um, the leftover money on a really nice hard drive setup so you can store tons of files maybe get an SSD so everything loads really quickly but for our purposes we're gonna be building a folding rig and so we put a lot of money into the CPU and the cooling uh, not so much into graphics hard drive and other things like that Alright, so as for places to shop, I would definitely not go to stores unless you know that they're having a sale on something that uh, for sure you want because their selection is usually poor and prices aren't that great either. So shop online, it's usually the best. Um, I like Newegg and Amazon.com. Newegg's great because it has tons of customer reviews, great service, and uh, wide selection. And Amazon is great because they usually have a little bit lower prices due to their... Um, membership uh, not sure if the, the no tax is membership but I know the Amazon Prime free shipping that's really nice and uh, also feel free to join forums like overclock.net and EVGA forums and just post a list of parts and um, ask people what they think about the build and you'll get tons of feedback from uh, people who've done this forever and um, it will really help you narrow down your choices and decide on what to get also, these forums have their own marketplaces, which are really nice because um, if you want to save money, maybe buy used or um, even new parts from them at a discounted rate, then uh, the people there actually know what they're talking about and everything is going to be related to um, PCs, unlike eBay or other places like eBay. And um, the parts are usually really well taken care of. And I know EVGA forums has... Um, a really well regulated marketplace and um, you're really not going to get ripped off there at all every um, trade I've, or transaction I made there has been legitimate and I've been very satisfied with it alright so let's go through the parts here I'll explain uh, what it is and just a few details about it but we'll do the unboxings and assembly in a later video so this right here is our case, it's the Cooler Master Half 912. It's just a standard mid-tower. It's actually pretty cheap and with Amazon's free shipping, um, it's really nice because cases usually rack up the shipping cost. But this one has got plenty of room, it looks nice. It doesn't have a window though, but that's fine for us. And um, it's pretty cheap, just a solid case. Here are fans we're going to use. They're the Scythe S-Flex fans and they're 1200 RPM. It says they're rated at 20.1 decibels, but I've learned not really to trust the decibel rating because usually, um, well, I find that a lot of manufacturers will like bend their results on the tests. And because I've I bought fans before that say they're really quiet, and then I get them and they're pretty loud. So the RPM is usually um, a much better measurement of the sound, and also just read reviews that people say um, if it's a great fan or not, and they like the noise level and it moves a lot of air, things like that. Here's our cooling, uh, the CPU heatsink. It is the Perlimitech Mega Halum Revision B. And we're going to have this with a push pull uh, configuration with two of the S Flex fans. We got this on a trade from EVGA forums for an old radiator that I was never going to use, so it's kind of like getting something useful for free. Here's our power supply it is a Corsair TX850 watt. Realistically, for this build, 
uh, we could use something like a 550 watt and that would be more than enough but this was on the EVGA forums some guy had RMA'd his and um, he didn't need it anymore so this is new in the box from Corsair and he was selling it and I thought it was a great deal so um, I decided to get it because it's also future proof since it is uh, higher wattage in case I want to upgrade this PC later um, it's not modular but that's fine because we're going to do a little section on cable management and um, the case doesn't have a window so you're not going to be able to see that anyway here's the motherboard we got it is a standard EVGA X58 I think is the first one that came out it is recertified got it from Newegg on a Christmas or holiday sale and it was seventy five dollars after rebate so that was a great deal we decided to pick it up and since it is recertified it only comes with the IO backplate um, but that's fine because I have all the other accessories like these SATA cables from other builds the hard drive and DVD drive um, first the hard drive I actually had a Seagate that broke and uh, I RMA'd it and this is the new one that they sent me so that's a 500 gigabyte Seagate drive which will be perfect because it, it has no cost to me and um, here's the Asus DVD burner you can't really see it through the bubble wrap but you can't really go wrong with these they're like 18 20 bucks maybe a little more with the tax but they're pretty much all standard as long as you get the SATA ones now with these two components the hard drive and the DVD drive I would recommend actually um, if you have a relatively new maybe like three years old four years old PC you can actually recycle those from your old PC and just stick them in the new one and they'll work they'll work fine for your needs especially a DVD drive there's really no need to buy a new one of those because really there's not much difference between them at all almost none here's our graphics card this is the EVGA 9800 GT this was Bill, Bill's um, old graphics card before he upgraded to the GTX 470 so if you use an old graphics card like this for a folding rig in which you're not going to need graphics that's fine like I could take my old 6200 LE and stick it in here but this is a much better choice because I think that card is on its way out seems pretty unstable to me but yeah this one's great and no cost because we had it before and um, uh, uh, yeah, here's the RAM I actually bought new RAM from somebody on EVGA forums and I switched it out in my main computer so this is the RAM that used to be in there it's a uh, Mushkin Redline uh, DDR3 6 gigabytes 1600 megahertz and the timings are 68624 and it was really solid in my main computer when I overclocked my 980X so I'm hoping it'll be great in this one too which it will for sure and here is the CPU now this is a Xeon server CPU and um, I'm not sure if you don't know this then uh, you always go by the socket so this motherboard is a socket uh, 1366 motherboard because it is the x58 chipset and the CPU is a 1366 CPU as well so it doesn't matter that I don't have a server motherboard or it doesn't matter that I don't have a, a mainstream CPU this will fit in there it may need a BIOS update because this is a relatively new processor but not worried about that it'll work fine and um, it's really nice because the Xeon processors are actually um, selected by Intel to be the chips that perform a little bit better than the rest just in terms of heat, power consumption, overclocking ability, things like that. So even though it did cost a little more than a standard um, X58 processor, uh, it fits our needs because it is um, the 32 nanometer manufacturing process which means that it will um, consume a lot less uh, energy while producing less heat and it can overclock a little bit higher and um, the other 1366 processors like the i7 920, 930, and 950 have a 130 watt TDP which is the thermal design power 
basically how much um, power it's supposed to take at sock speeds. And um, this one has an 80 watt TDP, so it's a lot more power efficient due to its smaller manufacturing process. Alright guys, so that's it for the parts. Um, next video will be the unboxing of each one and um, go into detail a little bit more about their specifics and specifications, I mean, and then um, we'll start assembling it. So look forward to that. Please uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and visit us at hardwarehobbyist.com. Later.